Meanwhile, I felt a particular call by our Lord to prepare our own home for secret Catholic masses. New priests trained in the English college at Dowie in France were beginning to enter the country to administer to the persecuted Catholics of England. I constructed a secret room where these brave and hunted missionaries could stay and say mass, where vestments, altar vessels and linen could be stored. The entrance to the room was carefully concealed and the actual room carried over into the house of our next door neighbour. The emergency exit was also hidden and would allow a priest or Catholics to escape through my neighbour's house. After my time in prison, I no longer desired to follow the Elizabethan fashions and clothes and jewels meant nothing to me. I began to dislike attending sumptuous banquets and parties and preferred to spend time in peace and prayer and with my family. My heart regretted the inconveniences that John had to endure, but he did not complain. He did not share my love of the Catholic faith and did not like my new ways, but he loved me deeply and allowed all that I was doing. I learned to transform my everyday tasks at home and in the shop into acts of prayer and sacrifice. Work that was dull, hard and disagreeable now became gifts of adoration, prayer and sacrifices for the Catholic Church and I found myself seeking out the jobs that the servants usually undertook. Sweeping the dirt from the floors emptying chamber pots and washing clothes and dishes became opportunities for me to unite with our Lord's hidden life and transform these daily tasks into graces for the Catholic missionary priests entering England, my persecuted brethren and the conversion of souls. The servants were startled at first that I willingly shared their chores but soon imitated the attention I paid to these duties and jobs in our home and in the shop were done pleasingly for our Lord. <laughs>